All right, so let's get into VCV here. Um, I do want to be able to use the um, the poly or not the poly inserts. I'm already using the the poly direct outs. Okay, so that's what I want for that. So let's um, let's move the clock here and let's start making a voice. What do I want to start with? Let's get a basic oscillator. I'll use some of my. Actually, I wanted to mess around with this FM operator a bit more. We're going to start here. And let's start with an arpeggiator, I think. I've been starting with pads a lot lately, but I, or with arpeggiators a lot lately, but I feel like I want to get good at them. So, let's get a let's get a sequencer. Actually, no, I want a quantizer. First things first. I want to be I wanted to try out um Instruo's quantizer and get a little bit better with it. Harmon egg. So let's pick a scale here and I want to This is going to be kind of my main driver for all of this The Transpose is kind of cool because I can probably use that to move everything up to a different key so I can just like always think in C But then move it to different keys. So let's play in uh, Root fourth No, it should be there it Should be a sharp four and then a natural five. So that'd be C Lydian. So first things first, let's just get some sound going and make sure that it's working. I'm gonna turn this way, way down. Gain adjust down. So let's send a basic clock. I'm gonna just for sake of keeping it clean, we'll use a teleport. And we'll teleport into um Is that what I want to do? Oh wait, no, that's not the reset I want. The basic clock. Actually, let's go to the first divided clock. So that's send that there. So now if I take the root note and let's see here, what was this? what was my audio? Oh wait, no, this is still no, this is audio now. So audio is blue. So I want to take a blue cable, which is four. And no, wait, I am still sending volts per octave. So what was volts per octave? It's green. I will memorize all of this. So volts per octave, and then let's take a blue and go out into the mixer. And hey, look, we got a pitch, which is what I was kind of hoping for. That's just the root note. And then now I need to remember how to use this. Like, that's weird that that just pushes that up an octave. That's not what I would expect it to do. But that is what I would expect that to do. Okay. So now we've got a root, third, fifth, and seventh. Let's get an ADSR going just to make this a little bit more palatable to listen to. I'll use this one here. And we'll gate it from the same clock. This is not Elden Ring. You are not wrong. I'm doing VCV today. So I need to get a... Um, Actually, I can probably just do this with a gate. Nope, that's for that. I, I need to get a, uh, a VCA going. Let's use the, um, sorry for the, let me let me just, this, this is like super annoying to have that just going. So let's get a VCA into the mix here. I don't know if I want to use punch. Yeah, let's try it. I kind of like punch. So we'll set that to trigger. I'll have to decide, I'll have to listen to it to see how much I want that to do. So we'll pull out from here, push into there, and now we should get some pulsing happening. Okay, and then now I want to quantize this. So now I need to start thinking because I don't think I just want to clock this. I want to do like a, a sequencer to it so I can pick different chords. So let's grab like the ADDSR or ADDR and we'll just kind of randomize this for fun. Go for a full eight steps for the moment. Let's hit it with the clock. And then we'll clock that out. Mm -hmm. 
And then I'm going to set the range of this to just be like, well, what's my range here on this? It's, this is a full plus or minus 10 octaves or plus or minus 10 volts. But I think we want to do less than that. I'll just do like plus or minus three volts. And now it's just kicking out root notes, which is kind of what I want it to do. Um, I don't want it to do every step, or actually, I just don't want it to be this long. So let's do, let's turn this clock, let's divide it down. But let's um, clock the gate on the faster one. Is that what I want to do? Oh, wait, no, I, I know what I want to do here. I know what I want to do. So what I want to do is pick the, um, let's do a merge. And we'll take all of the, we'll take all the notes in. Let's get the green cable, we'll just get all of these in. And then I'll use like a, um, I don't want polyarp, I want, oh, what's the name of this thing? It's like... Let me, let me mute this while I look for it, because I know the beginning of this, like the beginning of patching just sounds annoying as all hell. So let's see here. Um, this one, the sequential switch. I should just add this to my, um, how do I add to favorites? Not like that. Favorite. Oh, I can control click it. Okay. So now what I can do, oh, actually, no, I don't need the merge, do I? What I want to do here is, like, come up with a little sequence. We'll do, like, root third, maybe root again, fifth, seventh, fifth, root, third. Something like that. And then we'll take the up output, or the output here, and then we'll trigger the clock off of the same thing as the gate. And now I should get... Yeah. Now I should get a little bit faster of a deal here. And maybe we'll do like a times two on this clock. Let's kind of mess around with the FM operator a little bit. So that's not what I want. So these must be like a... It's like a built-in filter that I'm not using right now, apparently. So and then this, I think, means... Okay, so apparently the transpose... is not doing what I was hoping it was going to do. I'm going to need to learn how to use this in a... It's kind of a cool little sequence. Let's get, um... I'm going to send some reverb out to this, so let's go out to Reaper and pick a reverb here. Um, I'm thinking the lexicon maybe is going to be the way to go, the 480L. And then I'm probably going to want to do some stereo stuff with this as well. So let's patch in um, the right. Let's patch the right output up here as well. Ooh, actually, I might use a... Now that I think about it, maybe I'll use a second... A second oscillator. That's weird that... Oh, oh, because I don't have an input. Okay, right. 
So maybe, yeah, maybe I'll use a second oscillator. Maybe use, like, um, basil. It's nice. So we'll take the output um, from here into basil. And then take basil into the second input. Kind of like the second octave. That's kind of cool. Kind of gives a cool like stereo vibe, although I don't really like um, that being on the wrong side like that. So where do I want to go from here? I kind of want to, yeah, the, the octaver is really cool. I kind of want to like double up on um, maybe the gating. That's apparently, oh, I did a divide by four. That's kind of cool. Um, also, I need to run a... Let's just do a divided by four. And then let's... Do a real tight release. And then I needed to go back out here to get some reverb going on this, because... It really needs some reverb. Call that Lexverb. Do a big, big size. Do a full wet mix on it. I don't think I want to add any echoes, but I will add like a, that's maybe a bit much re reverb. But the sound is kind of, it's it's getting kind of cool. But maybe we'll add some delays to this as well. So let's do, um, let's do some tape delay. I think some tape delay could do some cool things for this. Um, if I did like the EP34. Let's turn the reverb off. And then I want to put this into wet. Ooh. Um. I don't know how to sync this. Okay, so if I put it in sync and I set it to 89 BPM. Let's push that. That's cool. Let's make sure that's all pre-fader. So if I turn this down, we should be able to hear. Let's throw some reverb into those delays. Yeah, that's cool. I also should probably turn it up a little bit in general. I always forget that it's a lot quieter for you than for me. Gotta get used to that. I'm going to, real fast, I'm gonna build a, a real quick pad out of the, uh... Oh god, that echo is... It just goes and goes. I actually probably should put it on less repeats because that goes for a really long time. I'm going to get a real fast pad going here just just to um, 
kind of get a feel for what it sounds like underneath of the chords. Um, it does kind of sound like a mystery area. Yeah, I dig it. So let's see here. What I want to do is I want to um, get a oscillator. We're just going to do this as a placeholder for now. We'll work on this more later. I'll try braids. And I'm just going to have this like running underneath the whole time. So we'll get... Um, where is the... Uh, what is the volts per octave input on this? It must be timbre in this uh, particular thing. So we'll just take a uh, molt here. I think this one's polyphonic, so we'll, we'll find out if it is, but we'll do a merge. And we'll grab, oops, that's not what I wanted to do. That's also not what I wanted to do. We'll grab some cables here and we'll uh, plug the cord in. And then we'll poly out into the timbre. I think that works. And then I think this thing has a built-in uh, VCA. I don't think I need to add a VCA to it. Oh boy, that's loud. Um, so it's definitely working. And then real fast I'll do, just, just to give it a little bit of life, I'll give it some ADSR before we listen to it. So we'll put the... Um, Oh, I need to give it a VCA. Unless this thing has a built-in VCA, but it doesn't look like it does. Let's grab the basic VCA. We'll gate... Um, we'll go out here. We'll take the gate input from the uh, single clock trigger. Also, my cable coloring is not good here. Um, and then my input here should be... Although this left trig input... Maybe that's where the volts per octave go instead of the timbre. Yeah, it's probably there. Um, so then that needs to go there and that needs to go there and it's going to my channel and now all I got to do is patch it over to Reaper. Boy, that's loud. Turn that down a little bit. Let's get the other channel going. Boy, that's even louder. It's also certainly not polyphonic. I wonder if I have to put it into, uh... I wonder if I need to put it into polyphonic mode here. Turn the gain way, way down. Bring the VCA down a bit. We'll give it a long tack time with a long release time, which is more what I had in mind. And... Okay, so this is clearly not polyphonic so let's grab a, an oscillator that is polyphonic because that'll make this a lot better so let's go polyphonic tags um you know what let's stick with the fm operator i think that could be a a cool voice so we'll do volts per octave in we'll do out like that has a kind of a cool 70s vibe to it and then maybe before we hit that, we'll add a filter just to, just to give it some crunch. I just wanna, just wanna hear some crunch on it. Maybe we'll do like, maybe we'll do tangents. Tangents has some really cool drive to it. So we'll go into tangents and then we'll come out. So let's push this. There we go. Ultimately, I'll want some panning on all of this, but for the moment, this is kind of a cool. A cool little bass to. There we go. Now we kind of have an idea of how it feels underneath. That's audio out. Yeah, okay, this is all right, except for this should be modulation. And then I need to throw resets on these things. So I need that. Reset should be number one, right? Let's hit the reset and run.
That's still not hitting when I feel like it should hit. Yeah, I'm trying to figure that out right now. Oh, oh, I understand why. I think I understand why. Nope, still not doing it in sync. Interesting. Hmm. Why would it not be going in sync? Everything's based off of divisions of the clock. This is pulling on... It's weird because it seems to like fall into sync sometimes. Well, I'm going to worry about that later when I build a pad for real. I'm not going to... Well, no, I should fix it now. So this gate should be hitting. That's where I expected it. Okay, it seems to be in sync now. Weird. One of the resets just didn't do it, apparently. I also need to add the, the mutes into here. I'm going to go ahead and do that now because I know I need to do it. This is kind of a gross thing that I need to do, but we're going to grab some mutes. And I'm probably going to need a second one, so I'm just going to grab it now while I'm here. And then what we'll do with this is this goes to here like that, and then now I'll grab from here to here. Similarly, we'll go from there to there. And then now it should be on the run input that I want to uh, hit the CV mutes on these. And I'm just gonna drag a cable over to every single one of these. It, it's gonna look ugly as all hell, but actually I could do this from uh, this run. Oh wait, no, that's the... I'm wrong. So we'll just go ahead and do all of this. It's gonna look really terrible. But... This will be important. So what this is going to do is, if I hit run... Oh, it totally didn't work. I wonder why that didn't work. Um... So now they're not playing at all. Why are they uh, So now they're muted. So mute one CV input. I tested this today and it worked. It's interesting that it stopped. Oh, okay, it did, it did work. So if I hit the run button, it should stop it. And then I can hit reset and run. I don't know that that's the best way to handle this, because hitting the reset button, like hitting, turning the run off... That's weird that it, like, works sometimes, but then sometimes doesn't work. Very interesting. Yeah, see, now it's not working, like, the mutes aren't being triggered the way they should be. And that time it worked. Hmm. Maybe this isn't the best way to handle this. I still haven't come up with a good plan for this. But I will. I will. The 
only reason I'm not using the mixer is because I want to use it for something else later. I have a different plan for the, using the mixer. Okay, so let's continue working on this. Uh, we don't have a filter or anything on this yet, so let's continue working on this. Let's do some filters. Let's try Boomstick. Cause it, wait, what about bolts? Let's grab the bolt stuff. So Tangents is polyphonic. Freak is polyphonic. But I'm also looking for something stereo. So Freak would do good. I think Freak is the answer here. Because it can do a uh, multi. That's interesting. I didn't mean to put an extra sequential switch in there. I'm actually going to put the ADSR over by the, uh, the VCA, I think. I still need a good, like, organizational plan. That's something that I'm still not 100% sure about yet. So what I want to do here is I want to move the outputs of this over to the filter and then bring the outputs from here over. Nope. Ooh. So then there's a way here to like... Nitrous is a little too intense. Borg's kind of cool. I do like Lateralis, but... Yeah, let's, let's go with Lateralis, I think. I think I want it. Tighten that up even more. So that's a minor seven. So we got C minor seven. So now we want to start messing with the inversions. I want to get the chord progression moving around a little bit more. Also, I feel like maybe this is... Yeah, the attenuverter wasn't moving quite enough. Now we're getting some movement. I didn't like that chord change. And that one's too similar. So let's do this. Let's, um... It's weird that that didn't work. So I want this one to be the root. So that's my dom dominant chord. I'll go back down. That's cool. Nope. dominant chord. It'll be a little bit of a straight up functional progression, but I think that could be kind of cool. And then we'll have a little bit more fun with the uh, inversions. We'll get those doing something a little bit more random. I want to make a ninth, but I just don't think that there's a way to make a ninth with this particular sequencer, which is kind of a bummer. 
Ooh. Wanna That's weird that it's like Huh. What do I want to do here? Maybe that. Oops. Where'd you go? And now they're out of sync. Huh. Let's reset it. They're back in sync at least now. Um, let's get a little. Uh, I'm not. I'm not done with this voice yet. So it's first things first. Let's get like come doll in here or something. Something to start modulating. Um, let's go to LFOs. I know I like the Instruo one. I use that one like every single time I patch lately. Oh, you know what? Actually, I'll... Yeah, let's get some modulation going. No, not yet. I'm going to do Tidal. Yeah, I'm going to do Tidal. I'm going to do a third oscillator in this... Uh, in this bad boy here, which is gonna be kind of tricky, because that means I need to get a mixer involved. So let's move punch, and then let's get a uh, let's get a mixer. Oh wait, it's not a title that I want. It's um oscillators, oscillators. What knob controls the continuum transfunctioner? That's a good question, Dr. Puffer. That's a good question. Let's do the macro oscillator. This is going to be kind of a fun patch. We're going to get a mixer now. How you doing, Dr. Puffer? Hopefully you're having a good night. Um, I think just the mix four should be... No, I don't need to do any panning, so I just need volume adjustments. We'll just do a real basic mixer. Uh, although, shit, I kind of need to keep this stereo thing... <laughs> Zoltan. So, I do need a mixer with panning. I totally lied. We'll just grab the mix four. So, I'll patch in the FM operator here. Oh, that's, that's not how that works. Oh, wait, no, that is how that works. I just need to choose a... Hold on. That's not how that works. I need to put you into the mixer. I need to put you into the mixer. And then these need to come out of the mixer. There we go. Now we're back where we started. <laughs> I, yeah. I haven't seen that movie in forever. I wonder what would happen here if we did an opposing arpeggiator with our, uh with our uh, other guy. Oh wait, I can't do that, can I? The output's gotta be the same output. I would have to do a second sequential switch. Maybe, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try it. What, what's the worst that could happen, right? Like, it sounds like rap. That's kind of the worst possible thing. So let's do this. Let's, um, let's duplicate with cables. And we'll run the output of this into the volt per octave input of this oscillator. And this is going to be interesting because it's going to run... We're going to set it to the down. And then maybe I'll set it to be like six steps. That way it like is never quite exactly the same. So I'm going to turn these down in the mixer.
Oh, that sounds cool. And then I'll put this up like an octave. Oh, that's cool. Now we're getting some like, some cool variety to this. It's pretty cool. I still feel like it's not quite Hmm. It's a little classical for sure. But that's because I put the chord progression into it, which maybe what I need to do here is like slow down how quickly it steps through the chords, which it's doing that off of the first clock, which is divided by eight. Maybe we'll divide that by like 12. Can I get it so that it affects strobes in and out? Oh, I absolutely could. Um, there's a level CV right here. So what I could do, um, I was looking for Kodal actually. So um, we could grab that, which is a really cool like random oscillate, like a random LFO. And I could grab this and do my modulation cable, which is number two, and put that on the level signal for three. And now it'll bring it in and out based off of the volts per octave of this particular uh, deal. Which it isn't getting loud enough to get fully in here. So maybe pick a different one. Push the energy up so it gets louder. Because this needs to get up to like 10 volts. See if we can hear it at all. It's weird. Yeah, see, it's at minus four right now, so it needs to... Um, I wonder if I can change this to be... Like, I know there's different modes, but I want this to stay, like, positive only with the offset. Which I know I could do with an attenuverter, but I'd rather not... Okay, so that's just going up and down. So maybe what I need to do is put it into a different model. Hmm. Let's go real fast. So that should be like coming in sometimes, but it's all in the negative. So I think I would need something to invert the signal. We're going to do this with a different, uh, with a different LFO. I'm also not sure I want to pass this through the same filter as the other one. Um, Let's get oct. Oct is good. So now you can see it kind of like almost trying to get in there sometimes. It's just really, really quiet. It doesn't get up to up to full 10 volts. Can I switch this to be we're, we're just going to get a dedicated LFO. I'm just going to do this with, like, this thing here. Because I can set it to uh, unipolar. Do a sign with it. Oh, that's almost even better. But I could turn it down so that it, like, kind of goes away. And then it'll come back. So now you hear it kind of coming in and out. Ooh, that is a cool idea, Turtle. Very cool idea. Maybe I'll put it on a slightly longer cycle. And then maybe we'll use this same sine wave output to control the uh, cutoff frequency. And actually, I kind of like this idea of like opposing cutoff modulations. There we go. Oh, I would love to have somebody else 
kind of playing around with me on these. These are kind of a fun exploration, but you can get a little lost in the weeds for sure. Okay. Turn our cords back on. My only thought is it feels like the whole thing could be up an octave, maybe. Um, we, need to, we do need to uh, fly you over, yeah. Um, I do want to add some steps, so we need another sequencer here. Actually, I'm going to need two. Actually, I'm going to try doing just one. So we'll pull the clock from the main clock. And actually, I kind of want to do an even, like, less often clock, but I think I can accomplish that by using, um, a, uh, Bernoulli gate. Yeah, we'll just use a Bernoulli gate here. So we'll clock in, we'll pull out here. Let's get the reset on. Actually, I'm not as worried about the reset. We'll set this to seven steps, too. That way it's also kind of randomly doing stuff. We'll set a range. What's my range here? It's, um, zero to four volts. So maybe we'll do zero to three. I think zero to three volts gets me there. We'll do a randomize. And, uh, let's hook this up to the inversion. And that should be a modulation cable. Um, it's not clocking because it's not getting... Let's send it clock every time so I can test. So that's a really low one. Oh, you know what, let's keep running in reverse. Why does this not seem to be working? Oh, because of the attenuverter, maybe. There we go. So, I think plus or minus five gets me enough range. Where am I at? It's very interesting. Oh, because it's zero to... Okay, so I want everything in the positives. I thought that this was going to work in a different way with this, but it doesn't. Oh, it's because I'm doing plus or minus. I, I want zero to five volts. There we go. Now I got it figured out. Okay. Now we get some different inversions of the chords. So now it'll do more random things. Let's throw in one more of these sequencers. I'm just going to duplicate it. keep saying duplicate and then I don't duplicate and this time we'll pull the B output for its clock so reset it there and then this will be a modulation for the voicing and we'll randomize so now we get different voicings with every uh, switch and we'll set this to be seven steps We'll run it forward. And that way it'll be different every single time. So this should make it so the progression is never quite the same. It'll be a little bit different every single time you hear it through. It'll be unpredictably random. But still with the basic idea. And then what we can do to really kind of fill this out is get a basic um, kind of bass voice going. To really anchor the chords. So let's get that going here real fast. Let's get an oscillator. Um, we'll definitely use bait or uh, 
Bleak. Bleak is like my favorite base oscillator. I just, I really love it. And we'll get an ADSR for it. Um, I kind of like this ADSR. Boy, that gets kind of high-pitched sometimes. We might need to tame that uh, with some EQ. I'm going to do that real quick over here in Reaper, actually. Is that not switching? No, I hit the wrong button. There we go. So we'll call this ARPS. And I'm going to just kind of tame this out with Pro-Q. This is the whole part of the whole reason for using the DAW. We'll set this to be a uh, not a high cut. Um, I want it to be... No, I guess I do want it to be a high cut. I just want it to have a higher Q. What's up, Moosey? How you doing? And then we'll do a low cut as well with a little bit more dB per octave. We'll do like 18 dB per octave. Same with this. Let's set it's like 18. And then let's make this dynamic. How, what have you been up to, Moosey? Hopefully you've been doing well. We're just gonna like use this to dynamically kind of chill out the frequencies of this thing a little bit. Because it gets a little, a little harsh sometimes. So let's get a basic bass voice going, and the way we'll do that is we'll just pull the root note here. Um, I need to go back to BCV. You got absorbed by a game. Nice. What game? I'm doing okay. I've been, you know, a little busy with work, but overall I'm doing pretty good. Um, that's not what I wanted to do. Oh, I already pulled the gate, so I just need to um, add a VCV. I wouldn't say that I'm getting, or VCA, I wouldn't say that I'm getting the hang of it yet, but I'm slowly, slowly figuring it all out. Um, I think this has a built-in VCA, but we'll just use punch. I, I, I dig punch, it's really cool. So we'll, we'll come out. It just, you know, it just takes a long time to get anything going, really, is one of the, the struggles of it a little bit. So, um, you know, it takes a couple hours before a patch starts really coming together, I feel like. So we'll grab that output, we'll grab a modulation for that, and then... Okay, so we've got sound going, at least. Now I just gotta patch it out to Reaper. So... I know I'm definitely gonna want stereo for that, so I'm gonna patch... Um, this over to five. Hello, you. You're loud. Visual... Project Zomboid. It's kind of like a generic zombie game. Interesting. So, real quick, let's make this a mono. Make that a mono source, and also it's a little bit gross and ugly. We'll turn the VCA down a bit. Ooh, that got cool. Let's organize all this a little bit. I do kind of want to work on this pad, because I'm not really thrilled about it. Let me solo out the pad real fast. Does this even have any reverb on it? No. That's a big thing. I need to get some reverb going to it. Which doesn't make the biggest difference in the world, but let's let's kind of mess with this pad a little bit and get it doing some things now. Um, so I've got an FM op. I don't know that this is like ultimately the sound that I want. I think I want something with a little bit more spread voicing going on. Um, and, you know, mixing the voices up a little bit. I don't really know that I want to do like a full-on multi, like, you know, a huge thing, but maybe have the same VCA going, but give it like ever so slightly different gate mod, or, uh, modulations. Hmm, I've got to think about what I want to do here. I do want to be able to split it up a little bit, so maybe at the very least I'll use a mixer and pan the voices around a little bit. Because I should be able to take the input here and then we can do two separate, um, 
two separate filters. I'll just duplicate. Oh, I need to uh, spread the poly channels out. That's weird. That doesn't seem to be doing what I expected it would do. Oh, I would need a separate VCA for this, wouldn't I? And a separate ADSR. No, I don't need a separate ADSR, but I do need a second VCA. Because I can just bring this in here. And bring this into... Wait, no, this should be the input. The output should go up to the second channel on the mixer. Which actually should be here. It's interesting that that's been playing in mono, because it kind of shouldn't be. Did I change this to a mono? Three and four. Yeah, that's weird. It must be because of the way it was working on the mixer itself. Um, I do need to try and figure out why. Why the uh, pitches are all wrong now. Poly spreads one to four. Interesting. That's weird that the uh, the voices are all weird now. What's up, Darth? I wonder why that is. Is it just too loud? Okay, it was just because it was loud. I'm starting to like that. It's starting to get kind of nice. Ooh, okay. So we got some tone there. Back off on the drive a bit, push the volumes. I just want to add some texture to it somehow. It needs, it needs some grit. I'm not sure what it needs at the moment. Maybe it needs a Moog filter. That was kind of weird the way that popped in there. That was not what I expected it to sound like. Let's do a little longer attack. Maybe even slightly longer. Um, I think modulating this would be really cool. So let's get a modulation source here. Um, let's do like an LFO. And we'll uh, come modulate these filters. I'm gonna try and organize this a little bit better. The VCAs are where we're getting out. And we're modulating that, so let's... Um, I'm not gonna bother, I'll, I'll do some clocking on this LFO. I don't think pitch is what I want. Well, maybe I'll just have it run random. That's fine. So let's modulate the cutoffs. Put it into slow mode. And then maybe we'll grab like the the ramp up for this one. We'll push these VCAs back up a little bit. I don't like when they get that squeaky sound. I'd love to figure that out, maybe kill some resonance. starting to sound a little bit more interesting and then what if we had the tape delay to this I'm curious ooh that's weird why did I lose the right channel that's real strange 
Oh, it must be that the, the cutoff filter. Okay, so maybe I will just do these off of the same thing with slightly different amounts of cutoff modulation. My only concern is they get a little hot, but let's push it into that tape delay a bit more. Oh, that's so cool. A low end baseline with a high gate. What do you mean by a high gate? Because I've got a bit of a rally baseline there to go with it, but I need to figure out what to do with it. Although it would be better to have like a like a sense of rhythm to it. So maybe what I'll do is I'll Maybe that's what I'll do for a baseline. Let's let's see if I can get a baseline to sequence instead of just held notes. Um, so let's use a sequencer, and we'll use like the stable 16. Although that seems a, like a bit much, unless I'm gonna trigger all my drums off of it too, which I might. So let's um let's clock it off of like the fast clock. And then let's hook up the reset. We'll hit randomize, because I just want to see if we can come up with a cool kind of baseline here. Um, and then initialize it. And then instead of that for a gate, let's use this. Maybe this, let's reset the whole thing. I wish I could get that bass to move a little bit less, like if I could limit the range of it a little bit more. Go away, bug. kind of cool. I wish I could send out the root notes without... I mean, I guess I could by sequencing a second Harmon egg and just not use any inversions for it. That might be the way to go. Let's do that. I think this is... It, a few low end bass notes at the beginning of each phrase. Yeah, I could, I could be into that. I'm gonna try and see if I can sequence a second harmony here to essentially give me that. I'm just gonna copy. So is it two zero four one point two zero four one? So now what we would do is essentially pull the volts for per octave from there. We'll grab it from here. And what's my scale? It's C Lydian. So I just need the sharp four there. And then we just need clock from this guy. Which is this output right here. And now I'll have a low end baseline that stays low. Which I'm kind of... Ah, uh, that kind of gets a little... A little too low for that. But... This might be a little too high-pitched for what I want it to be eventually. Um, I want to throw in another ADSR. Let's just use this real basic one here. You wish the doors had access to this? Oh yeah, they definitely would have done some weird shit. Well, actually, this this type of stuff was definitely around during the time of the doors. It just was all over the place. Like this is really more where synthesizers started. 
Um, so this is ARPS. This is pad base. Just so I can kind of keep track of what these things are. And then what I wanted to do with this ADSR was use it to push open, oops. So that'll be my gate in, my envelope output will be for the, uh, So it pushes the cutoff. More drive, less volume. I like that. do a curve kind of like that. Also, I haven't saved this yet, and I should probably do that. Just in case. I don't know if this will actually go anywhere or not, but... Um, so this is C. Lydian Classical. That's kind of what it feels like to me. Patch is like, it's not big yet, but it's getting there. Okay. I feel like I want to build some drums, but I'm like kind of not done with the pad. But I can come back to stuff. I got to remember that I can come back to things. Um... This needs some, a little bit more variety to it in terms of sound. I feel like it's a little too dry. The pad is getting better. Having a little bit of... Which I really like. I like mixing all the voices together. I bring the fifth down a little bit. Lost at Sea Lydian. I like that actually. I I've, I use that in uh, what was it? The album Reawakening. I call the track Lydian Dreams. It seemed appropriate. try mess around with something here. Um, let's go over to Reaper real fast. This is a big part of why I want to be able to do stuff out in Reaper too, is I want to do melody. I'm just going to play around here. Um, let's do something like Nexus for fun. It's probably going to be stupid loud, but... Um, Leads, single layer leads. Where's my just kind of bigger leads? I don't want chord leads. Maybe just like a square lead. These are usually cool. That's maybe a bit aggressive. Ooh, that's kind of cool. Let's go with that. I'm going to play with this for a minute. Weird. 
Interesting. I wonder if there's a way that I can do like a... Boy, I really don't want to do that with every single... Pitch. Is this... This is just sending CV out. It's not sending audio out yet. So I think what I want to do... I think what I want to do is do two separate octavers. And then... What did I do for CV or volts per octave? This should be green. So... <laughs> Some 80s lead guitar. Yeah, and I do want to be able to add guitar and stuff like that to it. So this should be green. And what we're going to do here is we're going to put that into here. This is going to get weird for a second. Because all of this isn't weird. And then let's do the same thing here. And then we'll add like a, a shifter that picks between those octaves. I think I can get rid of plateau actually. I'm not going to be using it. Which I think also means I can get rid of the ox pander for now. We'll see if I can get away with not using that at all. It'd be kind of cool if I don't need it. Got on my clock. I am actually going to move my notes. I'm, I'm still trying to come up with like the way I want to organize my patches. It's been kind of a tricky, a tricky idea. So let's see here. What was I thinking? I wanted to add like a Bernoulli gate to this. I think the way to do that is with a um, another ADD, ADDR, and we'll we'll clock this one like real real fast. We'll use the times four clock, and we'll do a range of plus or minus. Was that plus or minus one volt? Let's do plus or minus one volt. So hook that up to the reset. Actually, you know what? I don't want that one to reset. Yeah, yeah, I do. We'll leave it on eight steps. Let's randomize things. Keep it at eight steps. Run it forward. And then now we'll use this as a modulation source. Oh yeah. My only gripe, though, is that I would rather it be different for both of them. I don't really love that it's different for both of them, or the same for both of them. Maybe the way to handle that... Boy, this arpeggiator has gotten complicated. Um, let's try a Bernoulli gate. So let's do chances. And then what I can do is I can take the um, outputs... of this sequencer. And now instead of doing that, we'll do that and that. Is that not? Maybe I'm thinking about this wrong. Yeah, I'm definitely thinking about that wrong. Or wait. Oh, no, no, no. I got it. Yeah, I'm not thinking about this right. Hold on. I gotta think about how to wire this up. This is tricky. So that's the gate input. This doesn't do... Oh, there's different... Ooh, that's kind of cool. Okay, this is not going to do what I was hoping it was going to do now that I think about it. So I think I would have to do a second ADDSR, which I don't love because these things are 
a little bit heavy on the processing and it feels like I'm doing it wrong to to do that. But I think that's what I'm gonna do. Like, I'm almost certain there's a better way to do this. Actually, what we'll do is we'll duplicate this one with its cables. And then we'll run it out to here. Randomize that so it's a little bit different than the other one and then we should get some different results. There we go, much better. Okay, now that's working. Okay, let's get some basic drums going here just to get some, some groove going on this thing. Which I'm almost tempted, I'm almost tempted to like pull the drums out from Reaper, but at the same time, like, I feel like bringing MIDI in from uh, the DAW. Welcome to the chat room. Did I like disconnect for a minute or something? I must have disconnected for a minute. Looks like I'm back up now at least. Oh man, 13% of my processing. That's so much processing to be able to do this. But, um, we could clock in. That's master clock output. So where do I get the, uh, there we go. Why did that happen? Clock output. But my clock from the DAW is 89 BPM. That's interesting. So that's not right. It's not MIDI CVA that I want. It's, um... There's like a from the DAW or from device CV to MIDI. That's two device. So it should be MIDI to CV. Yeah, it should be this. Oh, it's this device. Here we go. So start is run. Stop is also run? No. I set this up before and I'm not remembering how I did it. I want it to be 89 BPM. So what did I do before to get this to work? Let's just go look at all the VCV stuff. It's gonna take me years, I feel like, to learn how to do all this crap. Let's go how it drops. I, it, I swear it's this module right here. And I'm not sure why it's not working right because I know I had it working before. So it's from the DAW, which is what I want. I should be getting clocking from the DAW. I already have the module. And then stop would hit the reset. Um, let's see if that works. Okay, so that works. So that syncs me with the DAW. I'm just not sure why the uh, external clock thing isn't working. That's weird to me. I think it should be the clock output, but that clearly doesn't work. That's not what that's doing. The re-trigger output, maybe? Nope. Hmm. 
Hmm. Interesting. I mean, it works essentially, but let's try something here real fast. I'm just gonna do a basic, like, um, a real, real basic idea. Let's get like a, like a cool lo-fi kit. I've got like the dream pop stuff. liking happy nope I want something something cool as a starting point here ooh that's kind of kind of heavy so real quick let's uh, mute VCV and find some cool grooves um, so let's do the dream pop stuff because why not actually hip hop off beats now those are gonna be way too much Modern pop grooves might be what I want. That's kind of a cool groove. Let's let's play around with that. I'm not, I'm not completely convinced here that like this is the uh, the kit sound that I want. I definitely might want to do something else, but this could, oh man, moving back and forth all day between video and audio editors is really tripping me out. So let's try some different kits with this. little bit much. I like that, but I don't love the kick. That's cool. So now if I'm doing this right, if I understand, I should be able to hit like reset reset and then when I hit play that's weird that it oh it's because I have the divided by 12 clock that's right I forgot I put it divided by 12 clock for the chord changes which gives it kind of a cool like this groove's not quite right this might be one of those things that I, if I ever find tracks that I really like that I'd rather get Deanie to play some drums on and do something a little bit more interesting with Ugh, man it's gonna trip me out so I, I don't really dig that for drums we'll kill that for the moment and then maybe we'll try and just um maybe we'll try and come up with something here in VCB we'll go ahead and get rid of the dock lock we don't need it Must just be heavily filtered there. I kind of want to do something like to add a little bit of a. Uh, am I going to set it up so that it begins with the synths only and then hits with the drums and bass a bit of the way through? Yeah, that's kind of my plan is to like record the whole thing all the way through and then go back and like turn stuff on and off. I also had an idea to like randomize that for like really long form that like. You would use like a randomizer thing to turn different tracks on and off at different times so that like every 16 bars you get like a new arrangement. Um, so I'm going to play around all, all those different kinds of things. I just don't, you know, I'll probably do something slightly different on every patch, knowing me. 
I'm still not perfectly happy with this, uh, this pad sound just yet. I think it needs something more. So we might isolate down. The, uh, the arpeggios are cool, but I want them to come in and out a little bit more. Like, I would like them to get... Hold further back at times. More like that. The bass is certainly not done yet either, but I want to focus on this, um, this pad for a little bit. Because I'm definitely not done with it yet. Which makes me feel like, oddly, I need to set up another mixer, which is going to be a little bit weird, but... Because it's not great patching, but I do like splitting up the voices, which is part of my problem. Um, so if I bring this all back over here, because we're probably going to do this again. Um, I also might do some octave up stuff, because I could pitch up and get like a richer pad by moving some, some notes around. So if I do another, instead of an FM op, what if we do like, uh, oh God, that echo is so fucking cool. I want something, something really, really chill. I'm tempted to try the Instruo. But maybe we'll do the even VCO. Yeah, let's let's try the let's try the Bifaco one. This is kind of a cool little VCO. Um, although I don't know if it's polyphonic or not. I should have looked at that. It is polyphonic. Okay. So what we can do then is do the same kind of thing. We'll get another mixer so that I can mix into it, and then we're gonna have to get yet another mixer to combine it all together. Um, but we'll take the polyphonic out. Although I think I'm going to do a separate poly merge and we're going to like enrich this chord a little bit with some octaves. Um, so let's take oct. Boy, I really don't want to like way overthink this, but it would be kind of cool to like randomly pitch one or two notes up. Um, so let's grab a merge. But part of the fun of the VCV is that you can go freaking all out, right? It's like half the fun of this. So let's pull all of this. I need to play with some noise too, because I have not done that yet. And then... Man... Maybe, maybe just take the root note. Although I have no way to merge that into enough channels to work here. I could take the fifth out and then we could bring that back in like that and that way I could get um, a slightly more unique note into this thing. That could work. So then I'll take the poly out and go into the um, volts per octave in. And then octave shift. I need to find how I want to do this octave shift from time to time. Actually, you know, I'm just going to leave it shifted. And then we'll take a... Uh, looks like I've got a triangle sign. Even... Oh, I've got a sawtooth. Let's definitely do the sawtooth out. So this is audio now into here. And this is where things get a little bit more tricky. Because what I'm going to have to do here... It's going to be a little bit... Ugly, I think. Well... Maybe the better thing to do is to switch over to a mix eight in general and just ditch the mix four. Maybe that's maybe that's the way here. Um, no, I have to. I can't break up the poly that way anyway. So yep, we'll just do another mix four. Spread it one to four, and we'll bring the uh, sawtooth in. And then what I'm gonna have to do is do un yet another mix four. Which, pretty gross, but... No, let's just do dark. 
So I'll set that one to dark so I know that it's different. But then what we can do here is I can pan these notes around kind of differently in this particular VCA. And then what I'll have to do is the outputs that are currently coming out of these VCAs will now go into inputs over here. Is that not right? Oh, they need to go. Okay, so these outputs will actually be my stereo outputs for everything. And then now I'll take this over into channel one and channel two, pan them left and right. And then similarly here, we'll take the left and right out of this for the time being. We'll plug them into three and four. So now I can kind of listen to what the second oscillator sounds like. Although I need to duplicate those VCAs, don't I? So that they're doing the same. Although maybe I don't want them to perfectly uh, match what these VCAs are doing. So maybe I'll do an ADD or uh, another version of this that's like slightly different. So we'll give it a longer attack. We'll just kind of... Let's kind of randomize that a little bit. So we'll take the gate out. Um, the gate needs to come from the clock, actually. And then that goes to the CVNs. The input will come from the output of the mixer. So that needs to come from here and here. This is getting to the point where like, I feel like if somebody were like, actually knew what they were doing with this, saw what I was doing, they'd be like, what the hell are you thinking? This is most certainly not the way to do this. So this one, I think I just want to pan like super wides. and we'll get something really rich. And then we'll just do a filter, we'll do a couple things here. First things first, let's do, um, that's starting to get, that's starting to get pretty cool. Uh, so I need something stereo, so let's try Lateralis isn't stereo. What what are these is stereo? I guess freak is stereo. Which freak seems like overkill, but but I like the idea of using it. Yeah, let's use freak. So punch this into the inputs here. And I think maybe what we'll do is we'll use that same ADDSR gate to open the cutoff. So let's hear what just the new one sounds like. And then the filter kind of closes down around it. That's cool. I like that. And then we'll mix the other one back in. And then we've got that echo going on. It's still right. Which I think I want even more of that echo. So set the pad. Space. We're just gonna send a ridiculous amount of this echo kick. Ooh, that's nice. I still feel like I want it to evolve more over time, but... I 
I just don't know what I want it to do over time just yet. I do like the extra octave up on there. Let's see here. What else does this pad need? It needs to like... Maybe like the granular. Something granular might be kind of cool. Um, let's see here. Let's just kind of look through different ideas. What else might we want? That echo is just so awesome. But the way that like kind of freezing echo falls off just sounds so cool. Um, I feel like I want to have like a master filter for it, but I might not need it. We're not doing much with resonance though, so like a master resonance could be kind of cool. I just feel like this needs something. Actually, a filter that's kind of... Um, doing more like a wub kind of thing the way it opens could be kind of cool. I really wish this wasn't in C major, that's kind of my only bummer, but... I never write in C major, so I guess it's okay. I need to learn how to use Opulus. Ooh, maybe like having a step sequencer kind of thing on the pad. What if we did that? What if we did like, um, what's the, where's the Mux? Do I not have that? I don't have the Mux slicer. I need to get that. Um, I think I know what I want to do. Actually, this thing could be really cool for this. We'll just... We'll just do like this kind of thing here. Actually, you know what? I'll just hit random. Randomize. Cool. And then we'll do... We'll do a step... With the, uh... Slower clock. And then hook up the reset. Oh, I didn't get that reset. And then... Now I just gotta remember how in the world do you like have this modulate because I would li love for it to modulate. But we'll take the gate output of this. And I need to remember how this works now. Maybe it needs to gate. No, that's not the way this works. It's that I need to, um, it's VCA that I want. I want to add a VCA. So we'll do this. I like this one because I can visualize it really easily. So we'll put the gate into the VCA. Um, although it does need like some softening, doesn't it? Oh wait. Maybe it's not the gate? Is that a CV output? Maybe it's the control voltage output. There we go, that's what I wanted. So maybe this does need a, a 80 SR. So maybe that should be hitting there. And then that should be triggering that. We'll just do a pretty fast attack, a pretty fast release. Nope, that's... No sustain, no decay. Nope, that's not the right way to use this. What does it sound like if I just do CV? Although I'm gonna need to use two VCAs unless I do like a... No, I'll have to do two. That's... Ah. There's gotta be a better way to do that that I just don't know yet. Like, there's gotta be a good way to get a stereo VCA. I guess the, uh, what's it called? So the way this would work then is now this becomes the right output. Oops. And then these punch into here like this. But I need, that's kind of what I had in mind. Um, I may want to limit the range. So I can change the, the range over here. 
Sequencer one, outrange, sample and hold. No. Let's do, um, let's do five to five. Nope. I'll find it. Oh, I want to turn sample and hold off. So I think I want to do zero to 10. Actually, maybe we'll go zero to five so that it's a little bit less extreme and then we'll just crank it up here on the gain. I do wish that was softer though. Like there's gotta be a way to soften that up a little bit. So what would that be? How would I soften it up? I mean, the ADSR clearly is the way to go, but I'm not understanding it right. Unless, unless you do it with a, a gate instead of a, so what happens now if I plug that in? It's kind of starting to sound cool. Zero to ten. Sorry if I'm not talking, I'm just kind of thinking through what I'm wanting this to do. I'm not entirely sure. I'm a little bit uh, unsure of myself here. What's up, Ash16? How you doing? <sighs> Thank you so much for the follow, by the way. I'm sorry if that happened a while ago and I didn't notice it. Um, I've got a little bit lost in this sequence and I'm not paying as much attention as I should be. Like, I wanted to do both things that are happening here. Oh, that's weird. That's weird that they're not both behaving the same even though I'm doing the same thing to them. I'm the first VCV streamer who talks, really? <laughs> that's interesting. I guess it kind of makes sense, you know, people are probably thinking a lot when they're doing it. Like, I want to do that, but I just want to calm down the amount that it does it. Or maybe not the amount, but maybe I just don't want it to be so quite so punchy. Maybe that's getting a little closer to what I'm thinking. reset everything I'm very new to VCV so I'm still very much so just kind of learning how any of this works this is very very new to me the bass guitar or the bass synth I should say is okay I do like this pad having this kind of jumpy thing going on to it though. I really do. Uh, I Yeah, I started this patch two hours ago when I started the stream, so I'm just kind of flying by the seat of my pants and figuring it out as I go. I've, I've probably done like, I don't know, like seven or eight patches now, but I've, um, I haven't really finished anything. I'm still just kind of like figuring stuff out. And there's probably a lot better ways to do many of the things that I have uh, that I've done so far. Like some of these dual VCAs for doing stereo panning. I'm not sure that that's the. I get the basic idea how it works. 
I just don't have like um, as full of a sense of what I would like as, you know. Ooh, maybe that's what I want to do. Maybe I want to grab a filter now. I think I have an idea of how I can make this do what I'm thinking. Um, we'll do... I'll pick a stereo one like Freak. And then what we'll do is we'll take the outs of Freak. And we'll patch this into Freak. Which we're already doing before we hit this. But that's for like a full-on cutoff sound. What we're going to do with this one is... Maybe that is what I was doing there with that. But this is going to be post this. Um... I can hit the CV out, or no, this one I want to have be a gate out. And we'll hit the cutoff with it? No, this one I would just want to use clocking. Um, most, I think every module that I'm using right now is free. There may be like one or two volt ones that I paid for. Um, I got really into the, the volt stuff as I was looking, or as I was kind of trying stuff out. So I, I think I bought one or two of those. Um... There we go. That's what I wanted to have happen. And actually, I think I want this to work in stereo, so we're gonna duplicate that cable. Um, and then we'll push the A and the B modulation slightly differently. Which, then I want to... So it's A input, B input. No, so I want A to left, B to right. Oh, that's cool. Let's get in, get in there. Maybe a little bit, let's go out to Reaper here real fast. Maybe a little bit more reverb on this thing. Um, I'm just gonna pull this lexicon up. And open up my tape delay. The tape delay is definitely doing some work. Let's also save this, I haven't saved. Well, I guess it auto saves for me, but let's push this pad a little bit. And also, I wanna cool, um, oh, you send piano signal in VCV, gotcha. Yeah, I've been messing around with, um, just doing generative stuff. I'm, I'm trying to learn how to do that because I've got my, my keyboard set up so I can play some lead and stuff, but um, I've been trying really hard to do less piano, but like also this patch, I thought I was in a different key than I was when I started. So let's see if we can make this reverb real nice and cold. Yeah, like I've got a... Uh, Let's get everything going here. So if I kick over here, I've got like a... This whole like a uh, six note beat thing is throwing me off without a drum groove to map it for me. Okay, I see what you're saying. You're like putting like a real piano into it. That's really freaking cool. That sounds like a lot of fun. I'll bet you can get all kinds of weird sounds doing that. Probably really fun. Okay, let's go back into VCV. I had a patch going earlier today that was really cool. I am still like feeling tempted to like change the key of this patch a little bit, but... That seems like a lot of work at this point. Let's get a kick drum going. I wanted to get like a little groove happening. Actually, hi-hats are usually a good a good starting point for drums. Um, let's do... I really dig... I really dig this hi-hat right here. And I'm just gonna use some... Uh, some Bernoulli gates to get some open stuff and get some like variance in the hats. So we'll do like two, we'll do a, uh, let's reset that. I'll get a Bernoulli gate, 
and we'll take that into the input of A, as well as the input of B. We'll take the output of A. Um, oh, Raphael Seafried, does he have stuff on YouTube? I would love to check that out. So this is a trigger for that, and then we'll send the trigger for this one. Actually, no, I want this to be trigger. No, actually, okay, I remember what I want to do here. This is going to get weirder. We're going to do a second Bernoulli gate on YouTube. Okay, I'll check that out. I've been watching a lot of Omri, Omri Cohen stuff. That's where I've been kind of grinding, learning. So here's what, this is what's going to be weird is we're going to set this one to like, essentially the first Bernoulli gate is going to trigger whether or not in the 16th note sequence the hi-hat goes off. Then the A output of the second gate and the B output of the second gate will determine whether it's a uh, open or a closed sound. So let's patch this. For now, let's go and patch this. He uses physical stuff, nice. I definitely want to check out more of that because that sounds like a lot of fun. Okay, so now here's the tricky part. Now we need to route it over to Reaper real fast. So this should be channel seven, which will go into channel six in Reaper. And then we'll come up to here and we'll change out seven here to be mono six. Oh yeah. Sarah Bell Reed is the VCV one. I think I've seen her maybe on like, um, on uh, Instagram or something. While we're out here, let's name that hats and let's definitely send that to some reverb. Okay, yeah, I've seen her doing that, I think. I've seen a little bit. Yeah, I found VCV a couple, like probably two weeks ago and I've just been like cracking on it. Oh, that's cool. Hit that. A little tape delay. Okay, let's pick some sounds with this hi-hat. I actually kind of like the sound right out of the box with this thing. Um, I actually think one thing I want to do here real fast is get a mixer going. Probably just something simple. I don't need it to do any panning. So we'll bring out output and we'll bring the hi-hat in. Oops, come back. Let's see what the metal sounds like. Do I need to like trigger that? That's interesting that it like just comes out. It doesn't like, need to get triggered. It's kind of a cool little sound just to have going, but it's not ultimately what I wanted. So these metal and noise things, they need like a, they need like a VCA before they go to the mixer. And we'll trigger the VCA from the Bernoulli gate. There we go. Oh yeah, you get that kind of like radio head kind of sound. That's cool. Thank you so much for following on Insta. That's kind of cool to get that little bit of noise channel going in here. Mix that with a hat. And then we'll leave the we'll leave the noise channel. Actually, what does the noise channel sound like instead? Sounds more like a snare drum. I don't like it. Um, and also I want it to happen even with the open hats. So let's get some logic gates here. So if I go to logic, uh, let's get a logic. We'll put a. 
as the, uh, we'll put this one as A, and we'll put B, so that way it happens no matter what. And then we want to do the OR output. I think the OR output's the right one, right? Or maybe it's the AND. No, that's when they both happen at the same time that that'll happen. So I want OR. Actually, I think either OR is the one that I want. Okay. So now we got a little hi-hat sound. That's pretty cool. Let's get a kick going. Um, and I think I'm definitely going to go with uh, Volt for this because I've been messing around with... Uh, I still need to learn this Nightmare Synthesizer. That thing is so cool. Um, this knock bass drum. I haven't played around with it as much as I wanted yet, but this thing looks like it's probably really cool. Somehow I've managed to keep my processing down. We'll decide what we want for a groove later, but for now I'm just gonna do four on the floor quarters. That'll be my kick. So let's put the gate in, and then let's just take the output for now straight up into the mixer. And it's, of course, loud as hell. I'm interested, do you stream any, uh, any VCV stuff on Twitch? Um, just kick. And then now I need to patch, this is gonna be, what, five? So it should be input, output nine, channel nine, to seven. Let's go over to Reaper. Set this to be audio seven. All right, now let's get a groove going. Which we could, excuse me. It's a little bit boring just to match the bass drum or the bass guitar, but I feel like the kick's probably a little bit loud at the moment, but um, I want to do, I, I don't have a lot of modulation going on yet, so it's time to start working on some of that. Um, do I have Oct anywhere? I don't. So I definitely want to get Oct and Caudal in here. Both of those are my favorites. So let's get Oct and then Kondal. These are both ones that I love quite a lot. And we're going to start finding some modulations here. I don't love just using like the one position for it and running it around the whole patch, but just because cabling wise it may not look the best, but it's going to work. So let's get over into modulation cables. And let's start messing with like Maybe the drive a little bit on that. Let's give that a little bit of a little bit of kick, a little bit of a tenuver. Um, I also feel like I really want to push the levels on these just a little bit. No, that's not the way I want to do it. Like the level balance of these two. Boy, that really hits it super hard though, doesn't it? A little too much. So this is where stuff starts getting fun. Oh, I real fast, I should add a snare in here too. Just just so I have the groove going. Just do drum. I know I have another snare here somewhere. I want to use Trummer, actually. I really, I really dig Trummer. That 
that should be a red. And we'll just, real quick, we'll just run this up because I may want to do other things with it, but for now I know that it can come right up into the mixer here. Snare. And we'll patch the snare over to eight. Over to Reaper. Patch the snare into eight. Okay. So now, the oscillator, we're gonna bring the level down. It's starting to, it's starting to get there. Let's let's add a bit of verb hit to this snare. Back to VCV. I feel like I want to have like a like an eight bit effect. Do I have any kind of like eight bit of I kind of thing? Like a bit crusher? Yeah, bit crusher. There we go. Right, let's see if we can, oh, you know, I got a pitch knob down here. Let's see if we can soften it up a little bit with some pro Q. life I'm not perfectly happy with it yet but it's getting good uh, let's see what do I want to modulate I think I want to modulate some cutoff on this thing so this is where the cables start looking real gross because I'm gonna run it all the way from this LFO Let's also move the uh, the tone knob a little bit on this module. Wee! All the way up here for these different LFOs. And then we'll pull the attenuator there. It needs like some really cool sound effect type stuff and I still have plenty of processing so I might still keep working on some voices for this patch like it's it's coming together what do you what do you all think is it is it making some progress we're, we're getting somewhere with it i think it's i think it's making progress here it's starting to sound really cool um, it's working for you. I know it's like repetitive listening to the same thing over and over and over again, but it's like, it's, it's kind of always different though, right? Like it's the same, but it's changing. 
you're grinding a JRPG and it's great for that? Perfect. What if we had some like pan modulation to like the pad? Ooh, that's kind of cool. See how it's just kind of like move that around in the stereo field a bit randomly. That's kind of cool. Let's do that with the ARPs as well. Let's grab something and kind of modulate the pan on those ARPs. I want it to be a pretty... I'm going to bring the energy of that down a bit. And the speed of it down as well. And then let's move this one over to like the DY output. I definitely don't want them on the same cycle. Speed them up a little bit. I'm not perfectly happy with this arpeggiator yet. And I don't know which oscillator it is because I have three different oscillators running this thing. So this is the FM op. And actually, now that I think about it, one thing that might make this sound really fat is to do some subtle detuning on all of these. Let's do like, um, minus 0 0.098 cents. Just like, just barely push them out of tune. This middle voice is a little bit obnoxious. Kicks a little hot. Okay, so next thing up, I want to add some like special effects. I know it's getting kind of late though. I really should be crashing out, but maybe I'll just go a little bit longer because I kind of want to do another like poly random type thing, but with the full scale. Um, what if we used Instruo again though? Just keep it all very, very diatonic. I think maybe, I think maybe we'll do that. So let's grab the, um, I need a merge, I need a merge. first time. So we're just going to grab all of these notes that are part of the chord. And we may even jump the whole thing up a couple octaves, I don't know. Um, and I'm going to do something like... We're just going to grab a whole bunch of stuff. And then I'll grab a poly random. And we'll send the poly out into here. We'll trigger this off of like the fastest clock that I have, I think. And we're actually gonna do this with two different things. So this, this merge, I think, is gonna drive two different elements for us. So let's get a sample and hold. And oops, sample and hold. Let's do like just a real simple sample and hold. We'll gate it off of this super fast clock. And then we'll use that output here to trigger the poly random. We'll see what this does. Let's get an oscillator here real fast just to get an idea of what's happening with this. I want to do something like, where's my Moog style oscillators? These are the Moog style. Let's do a Moog. Um, we're just going to do a sine wave. Yeah. Let's try this out and see what it does. So we'll take the poly out, which is still pitch information, and that'll come into the 
input, right? I have no idea what I'm doing, but it's fun. We're definitely getting some stuff, but the sample and hold may not be doing what I think it is. Harp 2. So let's patch this over to Reaper, so this needs to go... ...to 9. So back out to Reaper. We're gonna patch this as Harp 2. Oops, I don't want to add a plug-in. I want to route mono source 9. It's loud as hell. Okay, so I have a second clock now. So let's take clock 1 here. Maybe a times 4 clock is what I need there. Modulate this. That's starting to sound cool with some delay on this. Real quick. Ooh. That's starting to be cool. And then get some real good pan automation going with co doing it again. And then we'll get like a final filter stage going on this voice because we've got like this kind of like filter on the uh... so Let's get another filter. I love stacking filters. It's so cool We'll just use tangents for this so the outputs gonna come from there So now we're going to modulate this. What's my signal? God, this is such a cool module. Turn up the attenue burger and we'll get that voice kind of moving around a little bit. thing I want to do with this just because it's going to be kind of cool is we're going to add a second VCA this voice is kind of all over the place already a little bit but and then we'll do uh, one of these digital sequencers which actually I'm going to put this at the final stage here because that's going to be like its final output so we'll make this main output be this VCA, and then we'll head over into this VCA. 
and we'll get like a real smooth kind of curve going here. We'll run this clock over here so that it blows through kind of quickly. So it's kind of always moving up and down a little bit. A little bit of panning going on. Oh, that's what that does. That's right. I could like the blanks kind of eat up a little bit of processing so I'm hesitant to put too many blank panels into my patch but it would be kind of nice okay I think I'm at a point now where I've got to get ready to call this one it's it's not done yet but it's making progress I'm I'm starting to like what this is doing. This voice needs some love, like it needs to come in and out in volume a little bit maybe. Oh, also I'm dumb, I'm panning it, but I don't have it running in stereo. So we wanna push that voice out. Oops. Stereo 910, over to Reaper and switch this over instead of being audio 9 to be stereo 910. Now we'll get stereo with it. Also, let's um let's grab some pro Q and just do like a low cut. We'll do a dynamic band on this. and then add a high shelf. I don't want a bell, I want a high shelf. There we go. I'm not so sure about that boys. I don't hate it, but I don't, I also don't completely love it. Okay, so let's uh, let's do this real fast. Let's um, we'll hit that reset real fast. I still need to figure out how to get it to like completely kill when I do a reset, but we're gonna we're gonna mute everything here. I'm just gonna open this pad and we're gonna fade it in. So we're gonna start by going to, um, you know, first things first. Let's let's get the room brightness and let's let's duck that back real nice. And let's bring back the ambient light in the room just a little bit. I wish I could bring down my key light as well a little bit, but in the future. So let's hit run. Oops, I didn't have those muted. We're gonna start with the pad just running. Let's 
where the hats sound different to me now. Maybe it's just because I was listening to them in the context of the mix. See, now I can hear stuff in isolation. I can hear that this kick is... needs to tune down a little bit. Bass needs like a, a final stage filter. So let's give it a final stage filter. I think it needs it. Oh wait, it has one, but I'm opening it up. Actually, you know what? We're going to do this one. sound cool. I think. No, not Brigade. I want the Tri-Stereo. Much better. And then let's add... Like... I almost feel like I want some type of flange to it. get these to like damn they almost line up yeah I don't know how I feel about that voice it's not my favorite this also needs like a nice melody voice that I haven't built yet something to like subtly bring in some melody in and out I wish I could get some ninths on the chords Thank you. 
That was pretty cool. That's at least a good stopping point for now. I will come back to this patch. I think I'm going to come back and work on it some more um, here in the next few days. So thanks everyone for coming in and hanging out. I'm uh, J. Dublay. I'll be here probably doing some more patching. Um, I kind of like that every single time I do it, it comes out a little bit different. I'll be trying to learn new things and come up with new ideas. So thanks again for coming and hanging. And uh, we'll see you next time.